Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. <coughs> we are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 147. Today is our lesson number 31, day 31. Let's take a look at it. Very straightforward, very simple problem on page 147. We are given a graph that looks something like this. Line K and then we have line L and we are simply being asked to compare the slope of the line as I said it's a very straightforward problem there is nothing in it the reason I'm doing it is because as I explained the very first day of the of the program when I started this taping this video on day number one for those of you who watched it you I explained that my intention is to do every single problem in this book regardless of how ridiculously simple it may be and this falls in one of those this falls in that category ridiculously simple that is the slope what is slope measure? if somebody were to ask you it may be a simple question but uh, let's, let's learn something out of it uh, if somebody asks you what is slope measure? how would you articulate it in simple English language? I'm not asking you how to measure it don't tell me rise over run or this over that I'm not looking for any of that I'm asking a simple question, what does slope measure? How would you answer it in plain English language? Slope measures the steepness of line. Measures the steepness of a line. Steeper the line, steeper the line, the greater the slope. So here as you can see line K is steeper line K is steeper as you can clearly see it's steeper line K is steeper than this red line there line L then line L therefore the slope of line K is greater than the slope of line L therefore slope of line K is greater than slope of line L and this is your column A this is your column B therefore the answer is B because line K is a steeper line it has a greater slope that's all we are done that's it I'm going to erase this part now and we're going to do something else that's it we are done with this question so slope of line K is greater than slope of line L, therefore column A is greater than column B. Slope, slope measures steepness of a line. The steeper the line, the greater the slope. Line K here is steeper than line L, therefore the slope of line K is greater than slope of line L. That's all. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more and see what happens. Here are the two lines. Here are the two lines. Let's call it line line L. And here's the other line. Line M. Which line has a greater slope? Well, this is a tricky question. This is a tricky question because as you clearly see, line L is very steep, line M is very flat. So the based on what we just said here, the steeper the line, the greater the slope, that statement needs to be qualified. Oh, there is a word. It's a very simple, I'm going to digress here for a second. I'm going to digress here for a second. And for those of you who do not know what, what digress means, it simply means to go off a topic. It's a very simple word, digress. 
Let's see, when did I... Now, my question, I'm digressing here, I'm going off a topic. What does it mean to qualify a statement? Let me use this in the context one more time in case you, had, you did not hear it. What, the, what I said is that, a little while ago, a few seconds ago, what we said was, steeper the line, greater the slope. And you can clearly see that this line is steeper than line M. Therefore, the slope of line L must be greater than line M. But that statement needs to be qualified. What does it mean to qualify a statement? Qualify, the word qualify, of course, has two meanings. And of course, the first meaning, everybody knows about it. Everybody knows it because it's a very simple definition. To qualify for a job, to have certain requirements, so forth. But what does it mean to qualify a statement? What I want you to do at this point, what I want you to do at this point is to go, type, after you finish watching this video, is to just type in this tag. Just type in vocab day 27. That's what the day is. And day, day 3. Learn this word qualify. I'm not going to go into it right now because we, I, want to, I want to finish this, uh, this thing. Uh, learn what does it mean to qualify a statement. And once you have learned it, this, this, this statement that I just made would make sense. So what we're saying here is that line L is steeper and line L does have a greater slope, but, but here's the but part, but line L is negatively sloped. Therefore, the slope of line L, slope of line L is a negative quantity. I'm just going to make something up. Let's say it's negative 3, or negative 7 rather. It's a negative quantity. Because it's a negative quantity, therefore, even though the slope of line M may be, let's give it another value here, let's, let's pretend the slope of line M is half. Okay? And let's pretend the slope, slope of line L is 7. But even though the slope of line L is 7, but because it's a negatively sloped line, it's a negatively sloped line, the slope equals negative 7. And because negative 7 is less than positive half, strictly speaking, the slope of line L, slope of line L is smaller than the slope of line M because negative 7 is less than positive half. Unless, unless we take the absolute value of it. If you were to take the absolute value, then the absolute value of negative 7, which is a positive 7, is greater than positive 2. Taking the absolute value of positive is not going to do anything. But unless we, the line L is negatively sloped, so slope of this is a negative quantity, but if we take the absolute value of it, then it becomes greater. So what we should have said a little while ago is that the greater the slope, rather, the steeper the line, the greater the slope, as long as we're talking about the absolute value of the slope. As long as we're looking at the absolute value. Because if you're not talking about the absolute value and you're simply looking at the mathematical value, then you may have a very, very... Let's look at one more scenario here. Can you tell me here which line has a greater slope? I'm going to draw two lines and you tell me one more time which line has a greater slope. Okay, watch this. Here's my first line. Are you ready? Here's my first line. There's the line. What slope does this line have? Let's call it line. We have L, M, let's call it N. Line N is a flat line. And because the slope measures the steepness of the line, it's not steep at all, it's just flat. It has no steepness. Because it has no steepness, the slope is zero. That's what slope measures. It measures, it tells you how, slow, how steep the line is. This line is not steep at all, it's just sitting flat. This line, or for, for that matter, this line, or that line, any line that is parallel to x-axis has a slope of zero. So this line has a slope of zero. What about this line right here? Now we have too many of them. I need to raise one of them. So let's pretend. Let's pretend here is your y-axis, and let's pretend this is your x-axis. So any of these three lines, n or, or, or let's erase all of this thing. This this line n is a flat line. It has a slope of zero. This line, on the other hand, that I just drew, does have a slope. It's a very steep line. Does have a slope. But the slope of line that I just drew here is going to be less than the slope of line n because it's a negative quantity, unless we take the absolute value of it. 
then of course the absolute value of this quantity, whatever the hell it may be, obviously is more than zero because it has a slope and the negative slope there when you take the absolute value really becomes positive and whatever that positive quantity happens to be is going to be more than zero. Anyway, let's do the next question. Let's do the next question on the same page. In the next question, we are given a triangle here x, y, and z and we simply ask x plus y plus z over 4 and the, over 45 rather and the question simply is how much is it? Well this is very simple we know that the sum of, ang sum of the angles sum, s, u, and sum of the angles of any triangle, it doesn't matter which, which, what shape the triangle is, of any triangle, whether it's a right angle triangle, whether it's a right angle triangle, or whether it's an equilateral triangle, or obtuse triangle, or acute triangle, or isosceles triangle, it doesn't matter what sort of triangle it is, as long as it's a triangle, the sum of the three angles, the sum of the angles of any, any triangle, sum of the angles of any triangle equals 180. It is a tautology. It is a tautology. Let's learn this though, shall we? Tautology. It's a nice word to learn. I believe I covered it in my vocabulary lessons. Very good. Day number 38. Again, just type in this tag. Vocabulary, Kichwani Prep, vocabulary, day 38. Day number 38. And you will learn the word tautology. Tautology is something, listen carefully, a tautology, a tautology is something that is true by definition. A tautology does not require a proof. If somebody asks you, why is it, why is it the sum of the angles in, in any triangle equals 180? Because that's how we design our universe around us. That's how we design our world around it. Why does an hour have 60 minutes and not 100 minutes? Why does a feet have three? Uh, why does a yard have three feet and not four feet? That's just how we design our, our, our universe around it. The only difference is that the people who design metric system they, 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 they were smarter and they made it very simple. Everything is multiples of ten. The English system that we use in the U.S. is crazy. So anyway, but as far as the as far as the sum of the angles is concerned, we have all agreed in the entire world, no matter what nationality you are, no matter where you are, we all have agreed that we're going to define the sum of the angles in a triangle to be 180 and not 300. 300 would be simpler because 100, you know, three angles there, but we have designed 180. But tautology is something that does not require a proof. If somebody asks you why is it, you tell them it's a, it's, it's a tautology. It's tautological. Tautological. So here's 180. So sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. You divide that by 45. Well, how many, how many 45 is in 180? Well, I don't know how many 45 is in 180. 180 is made up of two 90s. And two, each 90 is made up of 40, two 45s. Therefore, 180 has four 45. The answer is four. That's it. That's it. We are done. I was going to do one more problem today, but uh, this video is uh, turning out to be a very long video because of the whole the discussion I went into about the slope and the and the uh, digressions that we, that we made about the vocabulary turned out to be a very long video. So I'll do the next one tomorrow, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.